Um, when you see Bellator uh, putting on shows with, you know, Hoist Gracie, Ken Shamrock, Dada 5000, Kimbo Slice, now these guys are not elite MMA fighters, but they're doing huge ratings. Fans obviously do want to see some of that. How do you navigate that as an elite athlete, as someone at the top of the division, at, you know, one of the top pound-for-pound -pound fighters? How do you navigate that? It's a super good question, man. I mean, you can't. Yeah. Again, there's certain things you can control and there's certain things you can't. And the fact that fans want to see Dada 5000 versus Kimbo Slice, you cannot control that. To be honest, that's a completely different demographic, though, because that's the internet sensation, the YouTube sensation that's coming right over and crossing over to watch those fights. Um, casual fans. Casual yeah. fans, correct. So the question really isn't, why are people watching that? The question is, how do I make those people intrigued with me? That's the real question, because it doesn't matter what other people are watching. You can't, I can't control that. Uh, all I can do is continue to compete at the highest level, continue to train, continue to show up and do my best, and then find the what's making those guys interesting to people. And I think what makes that interesting is the ghetto side of it a little bit. It's like, it's just like they don't care. They don't care. They don't care if they have an actual athletic event in front of a lot of people or if they have it in a lunchbox somewhere. It, it just doesn't matter to them. And I think that there's a certain appeal to that, a certain appeal to just two guys who don't care. And um, if, you look, if you really think about it, that's Conor McGregor and Nate Diaz, but at a higher level. And they right. blew their views out of the water. Right. So we got two people in that fight that don't care, just like Kimball Slice and Dada 5000, except they could also compete at the highest level. So you can see that with that mindset and with the skill set, you actually can blow all those fights out of the water anyways. Right. Do you think this phenomena, the Conor McGregor phenomena, where people are not as concerned, or fighters, as with the belt, and they just want super fights, like Cyborg mentioned, she's more interested in super fights than the belt? Just kind of opened uh, eyes to the fact that, I think that over time you start to realize that the belt, when they're, when they're making interim belts for certain people here and there, it kind of takes away the appeal of the belt sometimes. But then again, it's really the only way you can make money in your division and represent your division at the same time. So it's a choice. It's a personal choice, you know? Some fighters want that belt and just say, you know, I'm the leader of this division, look at it, this is what this means. And some fighters just say, I don't care. Diaz being one of them, he doesn't care. He's, he's cool with just going out there and choking people unconscious, collecting his paycheck, going home, not doing any of this, and being happy with that. And there's nothing wrong with that at all. In fact, it appeals to a lot of people. There's fans for every style. And you just got to run with you, who you are, be yourself, don't try to be what other people want you to be, and then you'll be your best. You think it hurts the legitimacy of the sport when you got the, you know, the first, the second contenders waiting for that shot at the belt and then it's just I'm becomes... I'm the bad guy to ask because I had the, I had the belt, I was hurt. And I kind of get it. It doesn't hurt the legitimacy, but it, it it leaves questions unanswered is the thing. It's like, all right, well, what if he did stay there? Would he, you know? For instance, Conor McGregor's going up and fighting uh, Diaz at 170 again, leaving the featherweight belt for Jose Aldo and Frankie Edgar to fight for. There's mixed emotions on that. It's like you look at, okay, what if Conor McGregor goes back down and fights Frankie Edgar at 145 pound, which is an extremely terrible style matchup in a hard fight, and then he loses, now he's lost all his push, whereas if he stays at 170, fights Diaz, and he happens to lose again, he still has it because he's like, well, but it was at 170. So there's still excuses to make for him to say why he's the best. He loses to Frankie Edgar at 145, you pretty much kill the excuses. And so, doesn't necessarily take away legitimacy, but it buys time. How would you like to see the UFC handle interim title fights? I don't know. That's, that's, I'm just glad that's not my job. I'm gonna leave it at that. I'm glad that's not my job. I'm glad that this is my job. I get to stand here on this side of the, the mic and then go out there and punch people. That, I'm cool with that.